Could what the Vril Society gained uh, be the reason for this 25-year leap that the Germans had in technology over everybody else? Could it be? I, th I think that it almost certainly is a major part of that. Alan Greenfield is telling us some pretty strange stuff. Germans channeling extraterrestrial knowledge from the planet Aldebaran. But what's interesting about that is that it does match up with what Hermann Oberth said. We were helped by people from other worlds. And we also know that the Nazis were absolutely obsessed with advancing their science by any means possible. How did the whole story of Nazi UFOs begin? Well, first of all, it was the disc-shaped craft developed in the Third Reich. And you know the Nazis were also developing the nuclear bomb. Michael Hessman is a very important German historian who spent a lot of time researching and developing information on the Third Reich. But more important for us, he's personally interviewed German scientists, especially Hermann Ober. I interviewed the German Nazi engineer who developed the German Nazi flying disc. His idea was that flying saucers could deliver the nuclear bombs to the Allied capitals. So Hermann Goering started a small project to develop this disc-shaped helicopter and it went into the test flight, but it didn't really maneuver sufficiently. It was simply a, a helicopter with internal conventional, rotors. Conventional technology. I mean, if Nazi Germany would have had flying saucer fireman technology, do we really believe it would have lost the war? Of course not. Hitler would have used everything to win the war, to, to get the final victory. There were two reasons the Germans lost the war. One, they simply couldn't develop this technology fast enough to get it weaponized, to use it to win the war. But the second is really intriguing. We know that there were German scientists who refused to let the German high command have this technology in the first place. They denied this technology to the German military leadership precisely because they didn't want them to win the war. Hermann Oberth gave a quote that we were helped by people from True. other worlds. True. What do you mean? After World War II, he joined the UFO movement in Germany. He became the honorary president of the German UFO study group. And uh, the German UFO study group involved contactees and psychics. He himself uh, worked with a channel uh, medium and uh, received channeled information. So he was successful? Yeah, very, very he, much. He did get information. Much. He believed in it. He believed that he came in contact with extraterrestrials through this channeling medium. What a shock. Michael Hessman told us that Hermann Ober, the father of Nazi rocketry, was a trans medium. Could that be one of the reasons the Germans were 25 years ahead of the rest of the world when it came to technology and Oberth brought that ability to NASA in the 1960s that's a huge revelation maybe there's a clue at Peenemunde itself and that's where we have to go in trying to figure out how a Nazi-era compass, possibly a piece of a UFO, might have gotten into a scrapyard in New Mexico, we've come all the way back to Germany, looking for clues. We've heard a lot of different theories about how the Germans might have taken a giant leap forward in science and technology, and now we're heading toward the very place where Hermann Oberth and his protege Werner von Braun worked and helped develop this technology the Peenemunde Army Research Center, right here on the Baltic Sea. What was the significance of Peenemunde to the entire war effort? Peenemunde was the first uh, huge research center of the world. You can compare it to Silicon Valley, for example. Christian Mühldorfer Vogt is the director of the Historical Technical Information Center at Peenemunde and has studied every aspect of what the Nazi scientists did here. This uh, research center was needed as to build the first rocket that uh, reached the space. 
This was innovation because nobody before was able to produce a thrust of 24 tons. The Russians and the Americans at that time uh, were able to produce only one and a half ton. Rocket engines excite a gas or fluid which is expelled in one direction and the thrust force is applied to the engine in the opposite direction. According to Christian during World War II, while all superpowers were working on rocket technology, the Germans somehow found a breakthrough that gave them rocket power 16 times greater than their adversaries. That's in addition to technology that the Germans developed, like computers, closed circuit televisions, jet engines, and they were far ahead of their adversaries, that's for sure. What other innovative technologies came from this place? There were the first um, computers here. Uh, the technical TV was also in action. Why were the Germans so much more advanced than the Americans or the Russians or anybody else? It was because this research center was aiming to control the world with military means. You're saying when you have a dictatorship that can focus the efforts of a group, that group tends to advance faster. Now, if this place was so secret, how did the Allies find out about it? In June 1942, um, English uh, airplanes, uh, they took photos here from Pinemünde. And in 1943, uh, the first attack by more than uh, 600 uh, airplanes from the uh, Royal uh, Air Force, and 70% uh, uh, here was destroyed. Did the bombing stop the work here? Uh, the mass production of V1 and V2. Uh, this was put uh, into uh, Mittelbau Dora, um, the concentration camp in a hill in the Harzmaul. After Pinamunda was bombed, the Germans had to move underground, which allowed for increased secrecy and possibly the development of unconventional technology. The man in charge of these underground facilities was Hans Kammler, an SS general who found engineering solutions to the darkest Nazi projects. In 1943, uh, World War II was lost for the German troops. They wanted to build the so-called Wunderwaffe, a wonder weapon, to change the war. But the Nazis hoped to change and to win. As Germany was losing the war, a group of scientists here vested all their hope in one single weapon, which they called the Wunderwaffe. What was it? Was it a super jet? Was it a guided missile? Was it a flying saucer? Was it something else? Was it something that was so powerful, such an ultimate weapon, that one stroke and the fortunes of war would turn? This is what we now have to investigate. That sign. Oh wow. Munition belastes gebiet, lebensgefahr, betreten verboten. What does that mean? It means uh, unexploded uh, munitions, uh, life threatening, uh, no entry. So this whole area probably contains British bombs, they bombed this place heavily, but it still might be live after all these years. I have to admit.